Lord, we love you for your faithful God. You are a great God. You are an awesome God. You are a magnificent God. You are our Lord. God, you are our King. And God, we praise you. And God, we honor you, Jesus. In the name of 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 Jesus. God, we bless you. God, we honor you, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you, Father. Father, come on, Zion. For the next few moments, cry out to him. Lord, we need you, Jesus. Lord, we need you, oh King. Lord, we can't make it without you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus. God, we need you every moment of the day. Father, we need you every hour of the day. Lord, we can't make it without you, God. We need you every second of the day. Have your way, God. In our lives, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus, in the service, oh God. Have your way, Father. We give it to you now, Lord. We give it to you now, God. We surrender our will for yours, Jesus. We surrender our all for you, Jesus. Have thine way, O oh King. Have thine way, O oh King. In the name of Jesus, come on, Zion, give him praise. Give him praise all over the house. Give him praise all over the house. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Lord, break every fetter, Father. Break every chain, Jesus. Break every bondage, oh God. We cast down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that family member that needs to be saved, God, save him in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that family member that needs a touch from you, God, in the name of Jesus, go to them now, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, give them praise, hallelujah, give them praise, hallelujah, give them glory, give God glory from the depths of your heart, give them glory from the depths of your soul, hallelujah. Come on, as we get ready to start service, come on, cry out to the king, cry out to the king, cry out to the king, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, hallelujah, Jesus, let's do it together, let's do it together, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, there was all in one place, on one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, Lord, give us that sound, hallelujah, Lord, give us that wind in the name of Jesus, make it all right, Father, we believe you to make it all right, Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand as we give God our best praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give him glory. 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 God, we put our minds on you, Jesus. We put our hearts towards you, Father. Nothing else matters in this moment but you, Lord. Nothing else matters in this moment but you, Father. You are our King, Jesus. You are our Redeemer, Jesus. You are our Lord, Jesus. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion, give him praise. All over the house, give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Now
shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he shall endure till the end, the shame shall be saved. I have read Matthews 24, verses 12 and 13. May the Lord bless the readers and hearers of his holy read word. Let's praise and worship everyone. Praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
for his grace. We thank God for everyone who is worshiping the Lord with us today here at the Greater Refuge Memorial Church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith Incorporated. GRM, would you please help me celebrate this beautiful family who has relocated to Florida and they are desiring to be in fellowship with us. Let's thank God for the newbie family in the name of Jesus. We want you to know we've been praying for you and your presence today is an answer to our prayers. We're so grateful to God to have you and we welcome you to the Greater Refuge Memorial Church. We are so grateful to God. It has been a long time, but my pretty auntie is in the house. She's not a stranger. She's not a guest. She's a member of the Greater Refuge Memorial Church. Let's thank God for Mother Ethlyn Ross Rozier in the house on today. President Emerita of the International Missionary Department of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And she did not come alone. We thank God that our dear, dear cousin is in the house, a retired captain from the U.S. Armed Forces. Let's thank God for Captain Latina being with us in the name of Jesus. And of course, once again, we are so grateful to God that the Stevens are here with us and our sister Johnson. We are just so grateful to God for everyone. And if you don't mind, I want you to just stand to your feet and let's celebrate the miraculous healing power of God. Our very own Mother Maxine Wilson is here in the house on today. There is nothing too hard for our God. If you have a problem, you may be seated. God has an answer. If you have a sickness, we know a man who can heal your body and your soul. And that man is the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, they are no guests, no visitors, but we're just so grateful to God for their faithfulness that they can push through the pain and still come and be in the house with us on today, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let's thank God for the Francis Green family being with us. Amen. Come on, saints, we can do better than that. We know that our mother, Alberta Green, has gone on to be with the Lord, but she has left a rich legacy, and they are here. And for that, we are so grateful. Mother Green would have been one generation. Sister Jackie is a second generation. Sister Jaquila is a third generation. And Princess Jane is in the house representing four generations of this family worshiping with us at the Greater Refuge Memorial Church. And we are so grateful. God bless you, Brother Jaquan. And we thank God for missionary Elaine McCoy. Her brother has gone home to be with the Lord, but she's still pressing her way with a praise for God. Come on, saints. We can do better than that. Let's encourage them in the name of Jesus. And we are just so grateful to God. We have a wonderful treat on today. The man of God sent by God to bless the people of God for such a time as this. Our diocesan bishop. We should be standing to our feet now. Our diocesan bishop is in the house on today, and he did not come alone. We thank God for the sweet fragrance of the Florida Ecclesiastical Diocese. Let's thank God for Mother Benona McCoy is here in the name of Jesus. And because of that, our bishop has an extra smile on his face. Let's celebrate the man of God, Bishop Dr. M. Rule. McCoy Sr. And as he is coming, we just invite everyone to just join us in a brief time of apostolic fellowship where we greet everybody in Jesus' name. Maybe you're going to do a distance bump. Maybe you're going to throw a kiss. Whatever it is that you want to do and feel safe, greet everybody in Jesus' name. Tell him or her that you love them in Jesus' name. Encourage them. We can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. We are the body of Christ. Everybody smile because Jesus loves you. The next voice you will hear leading us further in our worship experience is Bishop Dr. M. Rule McCoy Sr. Come on, get up and greet everybody in Jesus' name.
to the Lord and give him your best praise and say hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them. Anybody thankful for total deliverance on tonight? Amen. Not just partial. Amen. Not just three quarters. But if you know you got total victory, give God a total praise right now. Amen. I got the victory over the enemy. The world can't do us any harm. We're just so thankful to the Lord. Amen. The Lord has allowed us to be here. Amen. I won't try to front. It wasn't my plan. Amen. But God got in my plan. Because he knew I should be here with you on today. And as I came up the stairs, amen, I have to uh, digress. As I pull up on the parking lot, I can feel the presence of God. How many know what the presence of the Lord is? There is liberty. Amen. And we're just so excited. Amen. God has brought us from a mighty long way. Back in the mid-70s. Amen. In a response to a request of saints who had moved here, amen, we began to plant this church here under the leadership of the late apostle Henry Rawls, amen, and he would come, amen, the couple that was here, the Georges, and y'all have heard this story, they had a barbecue place a little further down here about where the Amway Center is now, amen, and uh, amen, we would park the, the vans, Saints would get out and just go through the neighborhood telling folk about Jesus. What I want you to know, you didn't get here by accident. Amen. Just encourage your neighbor say, it's the will of the Lord that I'm here. It's the will of the Lord that I'm here. Amen. And uh, the Lord blessed that through that effort this church was planted. Amen. In the year of 1989 when I was ordained in Toronto, Canada. I remember being on the floor Amen. Of the Hyatt Regency. Amen. And uh, at my ordination, Apostle Bono said, I'm not sending out another preacher. Amen. Amen. And I said to myself, with tears streaming down my face, I don't want him to send me. I want God yes. to send me. How many know if God sent you, it's going to be all right? I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at that time. And God spoke to me. Amen. Told me to come to Orlando. I had no idea what I was coming to because what was is not what I remembered. Amen. But how many know God is the God of yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. And so God brought us to this place. And I can remember coming with my wife and my young child. Amen. And the pull up on the side here of Terry Street. Amen. And Apostle Ross was standing there. He said, Makamoos. Amen. You had to know that's our affectionate name that he called all of his grandchildren. And I was just grafted in. Amen. And he said, you know, when you help God's man, you're helping yourself. Amen. Amen. And I've been helping myself ever since that day. And so God has blessed us. In 2015, we got an assignment to go to, amen, uh, New Haven, Connecticut, amen, to work in ministry along with our diocese assignment here. And I know there was some consternation about, amen, my departure. Amen, but I told y'all God was going to make a way. Yes. Amen. Didn't I tell you, amen, it would be all right. Didn't I tell you it would be all right. God told me to tell you it's going to be all right. And as I walk in here, Amen. And I see new faces. I see new families. I see new things. I give God a new praise. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish I could just explain to you how excited I am about what God has done. For I know it is the will of the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, Deacon McCoy, it would be all right if I get the offering after I say a few things. All right, and I'm here to get some feedback here in this microphone, amen. And so I want you to go with me in the book of Psalm, Psalm number 85. I thank God 
for all of you who are here, amen, and especially, amen, my lovely wife, amen, we'll be celebrating, amen, 37 years of holy matrimony. Hallelujah. And I'm giving God the glory and the praise, amen, because many are the afflictions of the married righteous. <laughs> and God, <laughs> out of them all, when uh, we came here, amen, there were many things that were challenges to us and to our marriage, amen, but she was very supportive in doing what God had assigned us to do. God didn't call her the pastor. He called me the pastor. Amen. But she is my wife. And I thank God for a wife that did not try to co-pastor with All me. Right. But would be there to help me meet whatever the requirements it is that God have assigned for me. How many know the Bible is right? right. Hallelujah. Somebody is wrong. Psalm number 85, a brief psalm there. Amen. When you receive the scripture, please signify by standing to your feet in reference to the reading of God's holy word. Psalm number 85. Psalm number 85. Amen. There are only 12 verses in this 85th psalm. If you haven't, just say, I'm with you, preacher. Amen. Psalm number 85. I'm going to read aloud. Desire that you follow along with me silently. Psalm 85. Lord, thou has been favorable unto thy land. Thou has brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou has forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou has covered all their sin. And there's a word here called salah. It means to pause or rest. I want everybody just to take a good pause. I want you to inhale and then exhale. That's a lie. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Verse number four, turn us, O God, of our salvation and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Would thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thy anger to all generations? Verse number six is where I want to hang my hat for this homily on today. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh. Amen. Them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Somebody praise God for the glory in the land right now. Hallelujah. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. Verse 13, let's read all together. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way Father, in the eternal and matchless name of your dear and only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our kinsman redeemer. God, we thank you for this wonderful day that thou hast made. God, the fifth Sunday of the new year, the 29th day of January in 2023. God, we thank you. You've brought us through many dangers, seen and unseen. Oh, God, you've enabled us to navigate the vicissitudes of life. Oh, God, and we don't take it for granted that we're here. Oh, God, but we realize it's because of your favor that's on our life. Oh, God, that you brought us through many difficulties. Now, God, as I stand behind this sacred desk, 
oh God, on this sacred ground. Once again, charge to speak a word to your people. Speak thou unto us. Edify us. Inspire us. Enlighten us. God, illuminate our minds and our thoughts and equip us for the work of ministry. And we shall carefully, deliberately, and perpetually give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. And everybody that love the Lord say, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Verse number six, I reread for your hearing. Amen, Lord. Psalm 85 and verse six. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Lord, wilt thou not do it again? Lord, so we can rejoice again. Amen. How many know God is specializes in doing things that seem impossible? Amen. How many realize that you have a record that God is a good God? And there is no, nothing or no one that can compare to his goodness. We sing songs like this. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Amen. That means you have history with God. That means you have a knowledge in your mind that reminds you that there's nothing outside of you that's greater than what's on the inside of you. How many know great is he that's in you? If he got greatness on the inside of you, I want you to open up your mouth and give God a great praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for how you've done it. Amen. We're living in challenging times. Hallelujah. I believe the last time I was here, I reminded you that this is what we call a pandemic dispensation. Now, dispensation is a period of time during which man is tested in respect of obedience to some specific revelation of the will of God. Amen. We came out of 2018 and there were so many things that we, amen, were expecting. But the COVID SARS virus was not one of them. Amen. How many realize God Amen. Works beyond the knowledge of men. Amen. And God allowed what was already here. I don't want you to get it twisted. Amen. The COVID virus is not a new virus. It's always been here. Amen. When you understand the biology and you understand the challenges of a fallen nature of man. Amen. You will realize that there's death among you right now. But anybody realize that you are in the valley and the shadow of death, but you're not going to fear no evil. Somebody give God some praise and tell him, Lord, revive us again. again. Hallelujah. So God allowed what was there to be uncovered. Now it's not proven, and I'm not a conspiracy preacher, but I want you to know certain type of viruses only come when humans interact with animals. Amen. And there are folk who worship God by engaging in all kinds of debauchery with animals. Amen. Because something inside of them have told them that the soul of the animal should be connected with the soul of the human. Amen. And we look at those situations with grace this day. But if you don't love God like he wants you to love him, if you don't appreciate him like he wants you to appreciate him, the season that we're living in will cause you to act just like a dirty dog. Amen. How many realize, amen, there are trouble all around us? Amen. Murdering that are happening and folk have no value of human life. Hallelujah. All kinds of sin not only outside the church, but within the body of Christ. Amen. Things are happening. And God has permitted us to understand that your hope can't be built in the morality of man. Your hope can't be built in your rules and your regulations. As I came in and I saw the same standard of holiness being lifted up 
It brings joy, amen, to me on the inside. But though your head might be covered, I want your heart to be right with God. I, I want you to be in right relationship with God. Because it's not to please man, but it's to please God. And no matter how heavy it is, amen, no matter how difficult it is, I want you to know if you recognize God has favored you, you need to give him some praise and glory. If you recognize God has been good to you, you need to show it. Amen. You need to, amen, exhibit the fact that you're not going to allow the troubles of this world to cause you to be troubled in your heart. John chapter 14 puts it like this. Let not your heart be troubled. I just want you to believe in God. Look at your neighbor and just say, I am a believer. Amen. If you believe in God, Jesus said, believe also in me. Amen. Now I want you to look at that same neighbor and want you to say, neighbor, I believe in you. Amen. If I got belief in God, God going to put somebody around me that I can believe in, that I can trust in. Somebody that's going to come along with me when I look them in the face and say to Sister Wilson, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. How many know God is worthy of a corporate praise? How many know God has been favorable to this church at 596 West Church Street? When they said it wouldn't be here, they said they were going to knock the building down. They said that they were going to eliminate our history. But look here on the 29th day, amen, in the 2023 of the month of January, we're still here and giving God the praise and the glory. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about being the church. Because he said to Peter's belief upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And I wish somebody that believed in God can believe in yourself and stand upon the promise of God and say, I will not die, but I'm going to live. Come on and give God a lively praise and say, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thou has been favorable unto us. At this condition, Israel, amen, was in a terrible state of mind. Amen. They had to deal with challenges within and challenges without. Hallelujah, when you look at Psalm number 84, amen, he's reminding us of how we should realize how much God loves us. And Psalm 84 and verse 1 says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. I just want you to be revived again. You will never get out of the pit that you are in as long as you are letting your problems Weigh you down for the spirit of heaviness. You got to look on the inside and say, I believe God. And I'm going to give God some praise. And once you realize that you're giving God some praise, you're going to solicit others. I want you to look down your road and say, just help me praise God. Help me magnify God. There's one thing about being revived. Hallelujah, if you understand the EMTs, uh, if you understand DeMar Hamlin just about two months ago, uh, hallelujah, an NFL player of the Buffalo Bills who died, amen, on the football field, on Monday Night Football, hallelujah, but he died, amen, two minutes away, amen, from the hospital that was trained in his kind of condition. How many realize that God allowed it? He got help right there. If God allowed it, he got somebody that'll pray with you. If God allowed it, he got somebody that will believe with you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in, I'm in trouble, but I'm glad, I'm glad I got you beside me. Come on and say, come on and say glory. Y'all just pray with me a little while. Hallelujah, because I realize that I got help. And having therefore obtained help from the Lord, I continue unto this day. I could not do the work I've been assigned to do if God didn't give me you. And if you didn't have a relationship with God, my absence would be your demise. But I'm so glad this church is not personality driven. 
It wasn't built, built on the spirit of Ross. It wasn't built on the spirit of McCoy. It wasn't built on the spirit of Bonham. But it was built on the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if anybody got that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it's dwelling in you, you need to let God quicken your mortal body. Somebody that got life in you, give God some praise. Don't wait till the battle is over. You got to begin to shout now. I'm not talking about a dance. I know my voice is elevated. I know that I am emotional. But you don't know what the Lord done for me. When I was on the other side of that building, just cleaning up, hallelujah, and a hypodermic needle stuck in my hand. Amen. Right during the time when things were, amen, being advanced about AIDS. And I prayed to the Lord and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. How many realize sometimes you just got to shake it in the fire? Amen. Anything that God allowed. Amen. Fear troubled me. Amen. What am I going to tell my wife? Fear troubled me. What am I going to tell the church? Fear troubled me. But I found out it was the wrong spirit because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So I begin to talk to my own self and say, you are healed by the power of God. Now, I don't know if I got AIDS, just like I don't care if I got COVID. What I do know, I got Jesus. And if I got Jesus, that's enough. How many thank God for what you do have? And give God a do have praise. Oh Lord, how amiable are thy tabernacles. Oh Lord of hosts, a tabernacle is a dwelling place. A tabernacle is when you come to meet God. A tabernacle is when you set aside your agenda and you enter into the presence of the Lord. Now there are 24 steps if you came up the front steps. And every time you lifted your foot up them steps, you should have told the Lord, thank you. You should enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah, y'all know how I teach you. When you get to that back door, amen, you might be winded from taking the step. Because I know some of us don't step like we used to. But when you get to the top of those steps, you should pause. Amen, inhale and exhale. And give God a good thank you. Somebody need to thank him. Amen, this life ain't been no crystal stairway. We've gone through many sicknesses. We've gone through many hardships. We've gone through many difficulties. Amen. They told us they were going to give us 40 acres and a mule. And now they're trying to get you to pull yourself up. And by your own bootstraps. I'm just using some imagery because we go into February and a lot of y'all going to hear some stuff talking about black history. But I come to tell you, lose yourself from your social construct and thank God for your spiritual history. It doesn't matter what color I am. I know who I am. And God is on my side. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some glory. I am you of the tabernacles. Oh Lord of hosts. I love to come into his presence. David put it like this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us, COVID-19, have called a lot of us to be satisfied with worship at home. But there's something about coming together. Paul told the church at Hebrews, fail not to assemble yourselves at the manner of some is. I don't want to provoke God. I want to let him know I love you. So when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of God. And I'm not just talking about any house. I'm talking about where the spirit of the Lord is. Somebody give God a praise for the spirit of the Lord that's resonating in this house. I ask you, can you feel God's spirit? Somebody say yes, Lord. Can you feel his presence? Come on and say yes, Lord. If you feel it in your hands, let your hands go up. If you feel it in your feet, let your feet pack. Whatever you got, let the spirit move you right now. Somebody give God some praise. Come on and give
give him some glory. I'll challenge somebody to go and touch somebody else and say thank God for the agreement that's in the spirit. Come on and say hallelujah. Thank God for the agreement. If I can get one somebody just to touch and agree, it's going to be all right. Somebody give God an all right praise. Ah, uh, my soul longeth, yea, uh, even fainteth uh, for the courts of the Lord. Uh, my heart uh, and my flesh crieth out uh, for the living God. Uh, I'm in Psalm 84. Uh, amen. So you can't understand 85 uh, unless you understand the prayer uh, of 84. Lord, I just want to get in your house. Uh, Lord, I just want to get in your presence. Uh, Lord, I want to get around your altar. Uh, we've been called, uh, amen, and separated too long. Uh, we've been challenged uh, by the things that's going on. Uh, but what you going to blame now? Uh, somebody say, help him, God. Uh, hallelujah, don't you know folk are still dying? Uh, don't you know the virus is still here? Uh, don't you know we're still in a pandemic? Uh, amen, the reason that we fellowship in it is not against the law. It got to do with the dollar. Uh, amen, because if they kept y'all in the house, uh, then the economy would fall apart. But I'm so glad that my hope is not in silver and gold. My hope is not in Andrew or Benjamin. My hope, if I don't have no money in my pocket, I got Jesus. And that's enough. If you know you got a good hope to Jesus, tell somebody, my God will supply. All of my knees according to his riches and glory. He gonna do it. Might not have no health care, but he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The tip down my peace is upon him and by his stripes. Just wave your hand and say, by his stripes. Come on and say it like you really mean it. Don't you know he was wounded? They beat him. They scandalized. They pierce him in his side. But by his stripes, if you know you're healed right now, don't just think of where he heal you from. Thank him for COVID-22. Thank him for COVID-25. Whatever the devil got, I got a healing. Come on and say glory. Ah, thank you. Ah. Sister Ladina, uh, hallelujah for defending my honor. Uh, thank you uh, for serving the armed forces. Uh, amen. Being trained. Uh, come on and say hallelujah. But I'm so glad. Uh, hallelujah that I'm not dependent on warfare uh, from men. Uh, I came to battle today. Uh, how many know your praise is your weapon? Uh, how many realize that you come uh, to be in warfare? With everything that's trying to stop you huh, from giving God praise. Huh, if you got breath in your body, huh, if you got a tongue in your mouth, huh, if you got lips, you better open up your mouth huh, and say, How amiable huh, are thy tabernacles, huh, O Lord of hosts? Huh, I got a praise. Huh, I got a praise. Huh, and I got to get it out. Huh, I'm not going to leave here. Huh, and don't give God total praise. I'm not no leave here and give God total joy. Somebody that got a praise, just say revive me. Somebody that got a praise, say revive me. I want to praise him higher. I want to praise him deeper. I want to praise him more. I want to praise God. Call the Holy Ghost praise. A praise from the inside. It just don't stop. How many can praise God? That you got a song that the angels can't sing. Somebody thank God for the blood. Come on, wave your hand real slow. I say the blood, the blood, them sign my name. Y'all don't mind me. Just a few more minutes and I'll let you go. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. 
Psalm 84 reminds us of how you have to feel. Yes, Lord. In order to go to the next level. Jesus. Is that about anybody really in love with Jesus right now? Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. He heard my cry. Psalm 84 and verse number 11 puts it like this. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Yes. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. Will he withhold from them that walk uprightly? Is there anybody got some promises that God made to you? Are they good promises? Come on, thank God in advance for the promise right now. No good thing. I know we've been challenged, but you remember this COVID-19 pandemic dispensation, a period of time during which man is tested in respect of obedience to some specific revelation of the will of God. Y'all help me. Anybody have to take time release medication? Anybody know that when it's time release, you're not going to feel the effect right away, but you got to trust the person who have prescribed the medication. You have to trust the pharmacist who have delivered the medication. You have to trust the chemist that composed the medication. That's a lot of trust in any man. But I want you to know there's some praise that God got for you. There's time release. There's some stuff that God got on the inside of you. And then there's time release because the more you bless him, the more he bless you. How many realize when the praises go up? I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. The blessings come down. There's some blessings that God got for you that are time release. There's some deliverance that God got for you that's time sensitive. And you can't wait till it get there. But you got to learn to trust God. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. If he said it, I'm going to believe it. So I'm not going to praise God. Amen. I'm going to praise him in advance. I'm not going to wait till I feel the effect. I'm going to trust the doctor. I'm not going to wait till I feel the effect. I'm going to trust the pharmacist. I'm not going to wait till I feel the effect. How many realize you got to win it in your mind? Come on and say hallelujah. Now if they say it's going to be in two hours and it's been four hours and it ain't happened, get rid of your doctor. Come on and say hallelujah. But I know the God I serve. Deacon Bailey, he's an old time God. He said and it shall come to pass that before you call me, I'm going to answer. And while you're yet speaking, I'm going to hear you. I wish somebody would release that time right now and begin to thank God. Begin to bless God. And then that's how I got the Holy Ghost. And then they would tell us, clap your hands and call on Jesus. They would say, call him a little faster. They would say, call him like you mean it. Anybody that know that you can call Jesus, but you can call him a little bit faster. We done got so sedated. Done got so sophisticated. We know about rapping. We know about Ebonics. But what about calling on the name of Jesus? What about calling on the name of Jesus? If I call on Jesus, he'll answer my prayer. I come to tell you there's a language of heaven. Anybody know that power in the name of Jesus? Anybody know that power in the name of Jesus? Well, help me call it. Call him by his name. Call him like you love to be in his tabernacle. Call him like you love to be in his presence. When I call on Jesus. Come on and say glory. Come on and say hallelujah. I know there's folk around you that don't understand. But the Bible says when they were all together on one accord and they was in one place. Amen. They all had the same mind. Amen. There came a sign from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Anybody hear a sound in heaven? The old folk used to say it like this. Up above my head. Up above my head. I hear music. Anybody hear a blessing coming? Anybody can hear a blessing in the wind? That's why I'm praising God. Because I hear the blessing. That's why I'm magnifying God. Because I feel the blessing. You can't make me feel. God not going to deliver me. I had it in my ear. 
I felt it in my body. I delivered it out of my mouth. Somebody give God a deliverance praise. Come on and say, I deliver. Come on and say, hallelujah. Look up at your neighbor and say, revive us again. Lamar Hamlin. Hallelujah. He needs to be revived. The epitome of health. Trained as a professional athlete. Some call it a freak accident. Some call it an act of God. But he got hit in his heart. And his heart stopped. COVID-19 will stop your heart. Jesus. Things have happened to you that just done caused you to be in spiritual arrest. Yes. So scared to come out, so scared to stay in. You're scared to get up, you're scared to get down. And the more folk try, the more confused you get. Yes. I mean, how many of you know we live living in a lion time? Come on and say hallelujah. I know y'all don't like that 45th president, but he told you fake news, fake news. That, that's just what it is. A lot of stuff they don't trust. Amen. Anybody, hallelujah, but I want you to know you can trust God. Amen. How many know your hope is not in the political government? How many realize your hope is not in mayor buddy? Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. Because when he became the mayor, he wasn't our buddy. But we kept on praising God. Anybody been to all night prayer here? Well, give God a praise. I just believe while we were here on this floor, didn't have carpet back then like we do have now. Didn't have attitudes then like we do have now. But we kept on believing God. And I, I just believe that there was a release in the atmosphere. There was a praise that God sent the head. And now I'm walking in that praise. Don't have to worry about what's going on here. God is taking care of 596. Come on sister Yearwood, this is glory 596 come on and say hallelujah somebody that know God is worthy of the glory, open up your mouth and give him your best praise the glory of the Lord is in this house when I see children rising up, amen, and children having children come on and say hallelujah I believe that the youngest one we got in here is Jay, well Jay came, amen, through the mother of Sister Yearwood. Hallelujah. And Mother Iris. Hallelujah. Would be right there praying in the all night prayer. Hallelujah. She said, I'm praying for my family. Is there anybody know you can put it in the atmosphere? If you believe God is a good God, if you want Him to revive your family, I want you to know God will cause them to fall dead right where they are. But He got somebody with the training and with a defibrillator that can just put it on them. Somebody give God some glory in the praise. God is sending a shockwave. He's going to my house. God is sending a shockwave. He's going to my neighborhood. God is sending a shockwave. Is there anybody want God to do something for somebody who's not here that's dead in their sins and you want God to wake them up. You want a few more minutes and I'll leave you. Yeah. Hallelujah. When they hit it, uh, hallelujah, they had to hit it multiple times. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, don't stop praising. Uh, the Lord is now. Uh, don't stop praying. Uh, he'll hear your cry. Uh, what God has promised, he will surely, y'all help me preach like a Pentecostal preacher. Come on and say, surely, he'll surely do. Don't stop praying. He's going to answer you. You don't have to run to Dallas, Texas. You don't have to run to Houston. You don't have to run to New York. You don't have to run to Miami or Atlanta. You can stand flat-footed where you are and say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and I see God working out for me if you know God is working
work it out for you. Come out and just say, work it out. Sister Keela, I need you to come real quick. I want you to get with Sister Elaine. Both of y'all have experienced death. Come on and say hallelujah. Come on, move. I know when they were training you in Delta, they did you move faster than that. Come on and say hallelujah. Amen. I want you to help one another. Hallelujah, you see. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But there's a special connection. Amen. Between the macaws. Amen. And the greens. Even in their children. Y'all hold each other just a little bit longer. Because I come to tell you, God ain't through with you. But there's some stuff God is reviving. Yeah! You got the spirit of heaviness. Yeah! You walk into the valley in the shadow of death. Yeah! The deaf angel has come. But somebody that know the healer is here. Somebody thank God for healing right now. Somebody thank God for deliverance right now. I don't know what you know about agreeing in the spirit. But when you bless God for somebody, he'll heal your body. I know a man that'll heal your body. Know a man that'll heal your soul. Somebody praise God and let the healing flow. Somebody praise God and let the healing go. Come on and say glory. Lord, revive us. Revive us. Lord, revive us. Lord, revive us. Lord revive us. Lord revive us. Lord revive us. There's a lot of people who want God to revive the condition. He's not going to revive the condition. How many know heaven and earth is going to pass away? Everything that's been assigned to this earth is happening. Everything that you read about in scripture is happening. There are going to be wars and rumors of war. They're going to be pestilence. They're going to be diseases. How many know the Bible say in the last days many shall depart from the faith? Yes, Giving heed to seducing spirit and the doctrines of devil. It's happening, church. Yes, Folk that used to believe in the name of Jesus, now they won't even call on the name of Jesus. And you don't let the folk who do call on the Jesus don't call him not. Like you were taught to call him. You said, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you can't get it like that. Is there anybody was so deliberate when you was calling on Jesus that you tried to pronounce your words according to the Queen's English? But there's something about the stammering of lips. When the Holy Ghost come, it come with a sound. It come with a shake. So your Jesus became Is there anybody that know what I'm talking about? Is there anybody can think for him getting in your lips. Come on with your lips. Begin to call on Jesus. God, I'm asking that you sing your power. Sing your anointing. They was in the upper room. The Holy Ghost was falling. Folk was giving God praise. And the people on the outside, they heard the noise. Is there anybody that realized they tried to stop us? Because they said we're too but I gotta praise. If there anybody gotta praise, come on, make a joyful noise. Revive us. If you talk to Demar Hamlet, he got a breath. He got a praise that's not like he had. Amen. Before the death, but he got a praise. He said, I see things differently now. I feel things differently now. How many realize that there's a praise after this? Get your name and say there's a praise after this. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and give him some honor. Lift your voice for an after this. After this, what you talking about? This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days. I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. And young men shall see visions. Somebody give God some praise. For the Holy Ghost falling on the young. For the Holy Ghost falling on the old. Somebody thank God for what 
to seek and ask God. Revive us. Revive us. Come on and say glory. Revive us again. Everyone standing to your feet. I want you to get a revival gift in your hand. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about no fake revival gifts. With folk trying to raise money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about a gift that you're saying to the Lord. Lord, I'd love to be in your presence. Yes, Lord. Come on and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, are you going to let us go out like this? Jesus. Are you just going to let us go down like this? Jesus. He says no. He has been favorable unto his people. Yes, he has. If you know the Lord has been good to you and been real good, just give him a real good praise. As y'all can see, challenging my body, fighting through various things, but I still got the victory. Come on and say hallelujah. Somebody give God a total and complete praise and say glory. The gift you give it's not in the amount, Hallelujah. but it's in your heart. Yes, Lord. Let your heart tell you, tell you what to sow into this ministry. Jesus. I don't play with people. We've never had a lot according to men. Never had a lot of people according to standards. But there's one thing I know about this church. There is no church like this church anywhere near this church. Somebody give God some praise for your personal spiritual identity. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. There's a presence that comes here. Yes. And there's one thing about this church. This building that we are praising God in has been here since 1892. It was not designed to be anything else except for a worship center. The reason this floor is pitched like this. Because this represents the altar. Somebody thank God for the pattern of the tabernacle. Come on and say hallelujah. What God wants you to do is be able to realize that you need to come closer to him. Hallelujah. As we prepare to bring those gifts. Hallelujah. I want the altar, I mean the baskets to be put here. In the name of Jesus. Y'all come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear these instructions. As you bring the gift, what I want you to do, amen, is face the outer walls. I want you to meet at the back of the church, and I want you to come two by two. Anybody remember what it used to be like? <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. If the mothers are not going to walk, not going to move, I want somebody to get that gift and stand in proxy for them. Amen. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Come on, just go to the outer walls. And meet in the back of the church, two by two. Hallelujah. Can you can you get we're marching up the Zion? Uh, no, stay there, stay there, stay there, because I want I'm gonna tell you when to come. I'm gonna bless these gifts. And as I bless these gifts, I'm blessing you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Make sure that when you come, you come with a partner. Make sure when you come, you come in agreement as you bring your gift unto the Lord. As you bring it so that God can get the glory.
and thank God for my feet. Just thank God for my feet. I don't care how swole they are. I don't care how much you try to hide them. Amen. You know, that separates you from the devil. How many know the devil don't have no feet? No, the devil don't have no feet. Y'all know why he don't have no feet? He defeated. That's why he don't have no feet. And you won't praise God with your feet as soon as my feet touch Zion. We're just so thankful to the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. The anointing of God is in this place. It's a good reminder that God is a good God. Amen. The Straightway Church of Christ has been worshiping with us in New Haven, Connecticut. Hallelujah. And they missed their pastor and I missed them. Amen. But God has done a great thing here. Well, I'm glad. Thank you for supporting the ministry of Elder McCoy. Amen. Y'all watched him grow up. Of little Marcus. And now Marcus got a wife and children. Good God Almighty. Amen. Look what God has done. And he did it right amongst us. God is a good God. But how many know the best is yet to come? Amen. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's promised to do it. Amen. I want you to continue to pray for Elder Brooks in Sanford. Amen. He's had some physical challenges, but we thank God for his healing power. So pray for the Brooks family. Pray for the Refuge Church in Sanford. Amen. Amen. That's Mother Ingram. God bless. The Lord touched her. She was on a ventilator. Amen. As we closed out 2020, not knowing from October all the way to, amen, 2021. But God healed her body. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. So the same faith and belief that we've established here, we have it. Amen. Everywhere we go. And church, we go a lot of different places to see a lot of different things. Amen. So I pray for your prayers. Amen. I pray for your prayers. Don't stop praying for me, please. Amen. Because I know your prayers work. Amen. When my faith grows weak, hallelujah. Lord, let me see something. Thou hast, God did it for me. He gave me you. He did it for me. He gave me you confidence in the fact that if he's done it before and he will do it again. Amen. So listen to your prayers not only for Amen Elder Brooks for the Florida Ecclesiastical Diocese for region number 10. And as you know, the church is mourning. Uh, Apostle Gentle Group of Seniors transition to the Go with the Lord on October 29th. And we, amen, are looking for leadership. I say this, and I don't say this ashamedly. I say it unashamedly. Amen. I'm 60 years of age, and I've never known life without a spiritual covering, without somebody who would be there. From day one, my father covered me until 1993 when the Lord took care of me. And then, amen. Amen. Mother Rocha's father covered me to 1998 when the Lord took him. From that day to 2022, amen, Apostle General Gruber covered me. What I mean by covering, I honor God to have somebody over me. I honor God for having a pastor and a shepherd of my soul. There's sometimes when I had stuff in my mind and I'm going to go tell them. And just being in their presence would change what's in my mind. Just, just being, have you ever been around a man of God? Have you ever been in the presence of somebody that had that kind of influence that they could direct you and don't even have to tell you what to do? They said, well, what should I do about this? They said, well, what do you think? Hallelujah, don't have that. And I was praying and staying before God and saying, Lord, I need somebody. He said, no, you don't. So they have already all brought you to this point. It's me and you now. 
There are those who are looking to you. Have you ever thought about that God has put you in a place of prominence where you are the go-between between God and that person? I'm not exalting myself, but I believe everybody connected to this ministry. God has put you as an ambassador, as an intermediary between somebody who needs your covering and those who need your prayer because they're following you as you follow Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, I got you covered. I got you covered. Amen. We thank God and give him praise. Amen. So, amen. We thank God. Amen. Come on up here, Deacon McCoy. Amen. Amen. An office that we don't celebrate as much in this church is the office of a deacon. We just take it for granted. Amen. But there ain't no deacon. You can keep on looking. You can keep on seeking. And there's no deacon like that. Often imitated. Just can't be duplicated. Amen. Part-time preacher. Full-time steward. Thank God for Deacon McCoy. Because he could have walked away. Amen. He knew stuff about his pastor. Amen. New stuff about this church that would make him think I ain't driving no 50 miles one way to come in. My pastor don't walk the way and left us to hit him with this boy. But he stayed right here. Thank you, Dean. Thank you so much. I celebrate. But not only he's here, but he's here with his family. I know y'all say we family, but trust me, families don't worship together like they should. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. So I don't want you to know, I don't take you for granted, brother. I appreciate you. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you for your service to the kingdom. Amen. He reminds me that Apostle Ross set him aside. So he was Apostle Ross deacon. And ordained. So I didn't ordain him. That's why I want to emphasize thank you for your service. Because I know it could have been different. Alright, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Because I don't want to get in trouble with the deacon. Amen. I present unto you Deacon Luke B. McCoy Sr. Receive him now with all the amen. amen. God is good. I say God is good. And all the time. Didn't we have a time this afternoon? The bishop is in the house. He was telling us about his covering. And he's been my covering all my life. We're 15 months apart. We slept in the same bed for many years. The same room. Always been my big brother. Always has been my spiritual covering. And we thank you and we honor you. Now, before we get to the um, good part, the good part, Deacon Money. Deacon Money. They go hand in hand. So that's the good part. Money. But before we start talking about money, I want to um, give a special shout out to the Newby family. <laughs> Elder George and Mother Hazel Newby. Right. And um, give you an opportunity to say something at this time if you would uh, care to tell us that you got hit by a car. <laughs> Praise the God. Amen. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. I don't know if um, my speech might be at all. Praise God. I have a testimony. Yes. Praise 
Speak loud. Speak loud. My speech may be long, or my testimony may be long, but I would like you to hear it. Yes. yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. The song said, Don't you want to let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Praise God. You see, I can hardly walk. But I'm giving God thanks. Yes. 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 September gone, I, the 5th of September, I was 90 years old. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I was really young, but I was old. <laughs> I remember the time when I could jump off the roof. Praise God. I was the Jody Outerman Parish. Inner man is renewed every day. Yes. So, praise God. Uh, what happened to me? This old priest. Change the man. Mother has it. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. As I was saying, I'm 90 years Amen. Amen. Young. Young. There you go. Young. Praise God. We're going to be sugar on it, you know. <laughs> I thank God for our Bishop preaching. You preach like what I, I hear. I, 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 I hear what I know. And I know what I hear. Praise mm God. -hmm. I. I'm an elder. I was a day away from the city. Uh -huh. Praise God. But well, that don't say I must go to heaven because I'm an elder. Amen. When they get up here, they know an uh, elder up here. Right. <laughs> no. You have to be a son of God. Oh, yeah. When you have children in your home, none of them is daddy. You alone is daddy. Say when we get to heaven, God rule and not man. I used to, and I still do have a Bible study at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to have a lot of people coming, but after I get sick there, I couldn't manage them. Showing them stories. I keep mine. Yeah. And there's a brother I used to come with the elder, I used to come to Bible study. What well, some days we never see him. So we start to see, to find out what happened to him. We found out that he had a stroke mm -hmm. and he was in the hospital. And uh, we went to look for him, and after I came out, uh, he get worse and he could talk. But we went and prayed for him. And uh, coming home, I stand at the bus stop, waiting for the bus, and my wife saw something, which this testimony, I cannot do it alone, let she testify what she saw. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. And Elder Newby said that he cannot tell all of it. So then, let me tell you all what I saw. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I don't like to talk about it. If you don't talk how many people do that. Well, then... <laughs> I ask the good Lord to give me the strength yeah. to talk about it because it's a must that I have to tell it out. This testimony not to sit and go to tell it out and let others know how great and wonderful God is. Yes. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, as Elder Newby says that we went to visit Pastor Jones. We went to his home to pray with him. And uh, leaving the home to go home because the person who took us there was unable to come back to get us. So we decided um, we have to take the bus to go home. Then, standing at the bus stop, it was a Saturday night. The bus doesn't run good as during the weekdays. But we stand there, my little great granddaughter was four years of age at the time. So then, we stand there waiting. But she started to get fussy because it's night, you know, a child, you know, they tend to get miserable sometimes when they want to go home. So I say, okay. Let, I said to my husband, I said, let, I'm going to walk her down the street, not far from where we was at the bus stop, and then come back with her. On our way coming back, I saw a star coming from the yeah. from the from the north. It was way up, and it take time drifting, drifting until it come to the level what it want where it gonna land. I said, "Oh my God!" With a long string of light behind it. I said, but this is not a star. That's what I said to myself. But then I stand there with the child held on to my hand, and I said, but it can't be nothing else but a star because look how far it's coming from. Yes. So then it, I keep watching it, and it comes down, and it landed right where the accident takes place. Right at Pine Hill and, and, and 50, right at the corner there. Pine Hill and 50. That was where we were supposed to get off the bus. Oh my God. I said to myself after it landed, I wonder what kind of star is this? This look, this not looking nice to me. This look like something, something, something going to take place. I'm saying it to myself. But then, as I said that word, I saw somebody just come right up beside me and say to me, you see the star? I say, yes. That's what I'm thinking about right now. He said, it's a sign. And he moved on. I don't know where he, whether he go okay. up or, or down, but he, he, he stepped away from me. And after he, he stepped away, I said to myself, I wonder what is this? What sign, what sign he's talking about? So I stepped towards where my husband was standing at the bus stop wanted to go and let him know what I saw. But the bus came on the same time. And we have to take the bus. And then I said, when we get off the bus, or when we get home, we talk about it. So we get off the bus right at, in Pine Hill and 50. And after he, we get off the bus, he had the little girl because she rode with him on the bus. And when the bus stopped, she he get off, she was in front, holding the little girl hand, and I was behind and we both came off the bus and stand up outside. So then I have my handbag in my hand and I have a bus pass. The bus pass was in the bus, was in the bag. So I, I wanted to take out my bus pass to have it in my hand. 
to go across to go over the other side where we get the bus to take us home. He stepped. Meanwhile, I'm looking for the, the, the bus bus. He stepped across the street. And when I find the bus, and when I look up, he was in the middle of the street. Jesus. Oh my God. But anyway, the light was on. But by the time I make a step now to go across, the light changed. So I step back and the car didn't start to come down. Just behind each other, just fast, fast. I said, oh my God. But then when it came, when they come down to where I was standing, I said, my husband must take it over to the media now. He's not in the street no more. He's supposed to be in, in the, on the media. I hear boop. I said, oh my God. One day, a man came on the same time was standing close to me and he said, somebody get hit. But then I never feel no way because I feel more or less that my husband and my little granddaughter must reach the media now because when I saw him first, he was in the middle of the street. But it wasn't so. Is he and the child get hit? Jesus. But what I noticed, the car that hit him, it, I don't think he stopped running yet. He was going nuts and the others stopped. Any, any, anyhow, another one they go, they would just flat out to nothing because he was on his side to the media, between the media and the street, and his side. And my little granddaughter Hazel was stretched out in the middle of the road on our face, on our chest, our, our stomach. I said, Jesus, what is this? This is what I saw a while ago. Oh my God, what is this? And the gentleman that was standing beside me at the bus stop, he said, take it easy, take it easy. But I was just shaking. But, but one thing I know, I said, I held my hand up. And I said, Jesus, I need some strength right now. And he immediately, I feel strength come into my body because I was shaking that much. And the gentleman took me over to the Amscot store. And he said, I want to take you over there. Because I, you cannot see the street like this before the paramedics come. Mm -hmm. So he took me over here and picked up. And when I was sitting there, I could look to the window and I saw the street was full in a second. The street was full of people and the two paramedics came on and took my husband and my granddaughter away to the hospital. Mm. Praise God. So then, he was in Orlando Regional Hospital from that Saturday night until Sunday morning about five, five o'clock. The nurse took me and take me up to where he was at the inn. In, in the place it's where you, when you go in, where you, um, when you go in first, they call it the emergency um, room. No, that, not the emergency room. Yes, way, way up. They, they sent him from the, 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 um, the emergency room now up on the 14th floor with a lot of machine in making so much noise. MRI, intensive care. 
in, intensive care, yes. That's where the, you, the nurse took me. And when I look at him, when I reach there, I look at him. His head was as big as a tire. Mm. And the blood flowing from the tube down into a bottle. Mm. I said to the nurse, don't take me no further. Take me back down on the floor, on the ground floor. I can't take this side anymore. Don't bother to take me closer to him. So I went down and I called up the church and let them know what he please. And I believe I, this is all I have to say. Praise God. Praise God. That is our portion. Well, the doctor, she told me that the doctor was preparing to have operation on my head. And uh, when she go back in the morning to hear the result, some brethren from Vero Beach came. People who know Jesus. Yes. If you don't know Jesus, you are in trouble. Yes. But if you if you know Jesus, just tell him everything. He's all right. He's all right. Amen. And he prayed for me. Yes. And I he prayed. And when my wife come the morning, the lady at the front desk said, is this new to me? Your wife should, your husband should be operated on this morning. But she said, she tell the doctor, tell God to do the operation himself. Yes. If you tell God that, there's nothing too hard for God. So, he said, he look at her and said, this is a movie. The doctor said they never seen nothing to do. There was no operation. Thank you, but God has really done it. Yes. Did you hear that, Bishop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell him. Yes, sir. No, keep no secret from God. You can't hide secret from God. Yes. So, God, my brother said it. The head was as big as a tire. If you notice, there was a mark here. My dentist crushed like a broken bottle. And I was in the hospital for two months. Jesus. When I wake up in the evening, before, the first person I saw with my eye open was Jesus. Jesus. He was like this over me in the street at Pine Hill Road. Hallelujah. And I never knew what happened by Pine Hill Road. And he was over me and this girl. And I said, I, 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 I make a sound and somebody run. So I see the lady. I said, lady, lady what, what place is this? She said, you don't know where you are? I said, no. She said, you are in Orlando Regional Hospital. He said, for what? She said, you were hit by a car. I don't know. I work at night, so I don't know exactly what happened. And then she called and make some. When I look at it, I left the nurses and doctors to come around me. And um, but during that time before uh, we could have the coma, after the car hit me, you know where I went? Heaven. Jesus. I can tell you about heaven. When I get back and heard, I was disappointed. And uh, man, if you see heaven, Bishop, you can right now and run to God here. Oh God, heaven is a beautiful place. You see when Jesus said he can't prepare a mansion for you? 
in a room so low with nobody, you have a mansion for yourself. Good God. And I was in heaven but two months. Sing. No, but three. But three weeks. But three weeks. I am so glad that our Father in heaven yes. tell of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loved me. Yes. I am so glad that Jesus loved me. Oh, Jesus loved me. King Jesus loved me. I am so glad that Jesus loved me. Jesus loved me. Oh, you is only one song I can sing. When in his beauty I see that great king. This shall my song in eternity be. This is the dearest that Jesus loved me. The first person I see over me was Jesus. Yes. And he turned and looked at me and he vanished away. Yes. Then I hear my wife, is the nurse tell me that the wife will be here. Uh, no, I'm lazy, but I tell you, it is very long. Yes. Hold on. We've got to make this a next picture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to? No, I don't think. Oh, Bring it up. You know, give bloody glory. Yes. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Yes, praise God. So, you know that you are in a hurry for you, so I want to... Cut off here. Yes, next time. I'm like somebody else. I want to show to be here and next time to hear. I want to hear it. Praise God. Yeah, Let me tell you something. Let's just interject right here and we're going to um, catch the rest of the story. What happened to the granddaughter? We all want to know. She was we... young, so our, our body would grow back and get, get back here. But she <laughs> went over here and asked her. And I was in Orlando Regional Hospital, but she get over it and would bring well in school. Okay. But my old goal, my goal was really to see how we get together. Amen. Right now I have steel inside this leg. Yes. Come up here. So when we see me dancing, I have a reason to dance. Yes. yes, sir. God is good. I said God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. So next time. Next time, next time. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we'll get the second half. That's right, God bless you. Amen. 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 And I want Bishop to pray for me. You yes. Yes. I request your anointing, Paul. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 Won't he do it? Yes. I say, won't he do it? Yes. That same Jesus. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. Got Elder Newby out of the middle of Pine Hills and Fig. You must know him. You must know him. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to all subscribe to that um, mini series and we'll um, watch it at night, Netflix and, and Chile. Amen. Let's get to what I came up here for. Two Sundays ago, the pastor made a request. And it was his first time in two and a half years as being the pastor that he has made a financial request. And he just breezed over it and has not addressed it again and so I was like um, we need reminders we need letters we need this and this and he said um, I told the people what I want and so um, 
I'm just being hard-headed and being the deacon to come up with the reminder. The reminder of the request for next Sunday, Pastor McCoy has asked each and every one for a special gift of $250. $250. Now, if that's your normal um, tie Sunday, the Lord knows your heart. Deduct back two fifty from your tithes and go on normal if your tithing is over 